hi guys and thank you so much for joining me and please ignore my different shades of highlighters on my face because yeah it is what it is I did a different kind of video before I started doing this video and so I have a full face of various colors of highlighters so welcome to the rainbow day <laughs> I'm going uh, I'm going a bit crazy here yeah but it's okay I think don't judge don't judge thank you okay so before oh yes of course hi by the way if you are new here I'm Kat and I like to talk about true crime conspiracies and all sorts of related things and sometimes I'll also publish a video here and there where I do all kinds of crazy things really yes yeah that's me thanks for joining anyway and before we get started with today's case I just want to play a video for you so let's watch it hey to you. happy birthday to you happy birthday dear. Kyril Matthews had just celebrated his second birthday and he's happily looking over his PJ Masks cake in his mother's arms. It was a day full of joy and laughter, singing, playing, a day full of love and eating yummy cake. And five weeks later, five weeks later, this happens. Hello, yes, the NHS for mom on service and what is that I can help you with today? Um, basically, Carol, he's been acting really funny, like his body's floppy and his eyes is rolling back and his chest is like coming out like he can't breathe and he's not responding properly. Okay, so he's, is he awake at the moment? Yeah, but it's like he'll be laying down and then he lashes out and then he's just not, he looks like he's not here basically. His eyes are just oh. rolling back. Based upon that information that you have just given me there, it is advised I do arrange an emergency ambulance. This call, to me at least, is very, very strange to say the least. And the person making the phone call is weirdly calm. There's absolutely no urgency there. You would think that this person is, you know, very composed, right? Almost as if it would be a stranger on the phone. Maybe too composed. This call was not even made to the emergency line number 999 in the UK but to the non-emergency number 111. But what if I would tell you that this person making the call is in fact the two-year-old's own mother, the same boy you have seen celebrating his second birthday. The same boy who seems so comfortable and safe in his mother's arms and the same mother who seemed just as in love with her son who looked ecstatic to be having a birthday party for Kyrie. Yes, Felicia Shirley, Kyrie's mom, was the one who in fact made the 111 call, which is beyond disturbing to me, honestly. How can you keep so cool and collected whilst you say that your own two-year-old baby looks like he's not here anymore? And how do you not call the emergency number when you say that your son is not breathing. There is no panic there, there's no cry, there's no change of tone, there's absolutely no emotion shown. She seems to be like narrating a random story to the dispatcher. And don't get me wrong guys, I know that each parent reacts differently to situations like this, but I don't think that I have ever seen or heard any parent calling 911 or 999 be so emotionless and using the non-emergency phone number this is the part that gets to me most and and what would you say if i would tell you that the same mother recorded horrendous details from Kyrie's life all the while attempting to catch her partner cheating these recordings will later prove fundamental to this case so let's get into the story Born in September 2017, Kyril Matthews lived with his mother, Felicia Shirley, 
in a one bedroom flat in Thornton Heath, Croydon in the UK. Kyril's father, Kyle Matthews, lived elsewhere. Although non-verbal, Kyril had an infectious wide smile and he had twinkling eyes, he loved to dance and he was a happy and cheerful boy. He would have been able to express his feelings and even his pain even though he was non-verbal. Kyril's paternal step-grandmother, Christine Ernest, described Kyril as very lively, a happy little character and the most loving little boy always smiling. Kyril was not enrolled in nursery, so he would be in the full time care of his mom, then aged 21. A few months after Kyril was born, Felicia got a job working for Croydon Council, doing clerical and youth support work. She was basically working for social services. By February 2019, she resigned as she found it difficult both working and raising her son, which I'm sure in this regard a lot of us can relate. In August of 2019, Kyle and Felicia had a disagreement and he was at a christening the same month where he last saw his son alive. At the christening, Kyle remembers, Kyril seemed to really enjoy himself, he was dancing and he was a really happy boy. Having separated from Kyle, Felicia, now 24 years old, got into a relationship with Kemar Brown. Kemar had not been long out of prison. He had a violent past. He had a number of previous convictions, including for robbery, battery, possession of a knife and restricting and obstructing a police officer, as well as being subject to a non-molestation order relating to a former partner. When Kemar came into Felicia's life, members of Kyril's extended family noticed they were slowly being pushed away and they began to see less and less of Kyril. This is always a major red flag. Kemar would spend most of his time at Felicia's flat and regularly sleep over. Both of them were out of work and they both relied heavily on cannabis. As the months went on, Felicia became paranoid. She was so convinced that Kemar was seeing other women that she secretly left her phone on record at the flat to check up on him. And it was those recordings that captured the sound of her son being abused by her and her partner. In May of 2019, five months before Kyril died, his mother had taken him to the hospital. She told medical staff that he had fallen and knocked his head on a high chair. He remained in hospital for treatment for five days. The hospital investigated and it was decided Felicia's explanation was plausible so the police at this point didn't get involved but it placed Felicia and Kemar on the radar of social services visited them at her address. A passerby had alerted officers on July 17, 2019 after hearing shouting and screaming coming from the flat with a female voice saying stop hitting my face. The pair were spoken to by officers but no one was injured and Kyril seemed safe and well so no further action was taken. Two months before Kyril was killed he went to stay with his grandparents. He didn't settle, he wouldn't eat and he cried all night. It happened again in October 2019 on that occasion, Kyril was said to be reluctant to get out of the car to go back to his mother's flat. I mean, you could see the red flags. You could see the change in Kyril's behavior toward his mom and her partner. This should never be taken lightly, especially from a baby. He was only two years old. Even though the child was non-verbal, he was still able to make his feelings known. And within days, Kyril would be dead. On 20th of October 2019 at around 3 p.m. Felicia makes a 111 call asking for advice when her son's body was going floppy. As I said before she called the non-emergency number and it was actually the dispatcher who called the, the emergency ambulance. She was advised to carry out CPR but when an ambulance arrived 
just 12 minutes later, they couldn't detect a heartbeat. They also noticed that his body temperature was low, indicating he had not been breathing for some time. Also present was her boyfriend, Kemar Brown. Both he and Felicia stated that Kyril had some sort of fit while he was sleeping. Kyril was rushed to hospital, but despite extensive efforts to revive him, he was sadly pronounced dead at 4.15 p.m. at Croydon Hospital. Police had been called to the scene and initially it was not clear if Kemar and Felicia were only witnesses to a tragic death, both having denied any ill treatment. Police spoke to Kemar Brown about what had happened before the emergency services arrived and according to police body-worn camera, Kemar said it was like Kyril was having nightmares, they didn't know what was happening and they were just watching him laying down. They were just watching him laying down, but they didn't know what happened. Kemar then tried to feed Kyril cornflakes, juice and sweets to help him wake up as he lay unconscious. Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard such thing in my life to feed someone cornflakes, juice and sweets when they are unconscious to make them wake up. In which world does this make sense? I, I don't know. Honestly, there are so many of these individuals, if I can even call them that, that come up with such childish stories and just simply plain stupid. It's just stupid. Kemar also said they both believed that Kyril was tired, sleeping and he was lazy really. Of course, he's unconscious but he's sleeping because he's lazy. Th this is another one. As we've already heard, the 111 call Felicia was talking in a calm manner at the beginning of the phone call, becoming increasingly distressed as an NHS clinical advisor gave her directions for CPR and turning hysterical when Kyril was declared dead. This is one thing which again, from my point of view, doesn't make any sense and it, it kind of, in a way, seems to me like Felicia at this point, she was trying to act all dramatic to show that, oh my God, she's so shocked. But at the same time, we need to remember that the ambulance arrived 12 minutes later in that flat and they checked for a heartbeat Kyril didn't have a heartbeat and also his temperature was low which indicated that he was dead for some time before they arrived. So this pair, Felicia and Kemar, they must have known already that Kyril was deceased. Kemar's demeanor, however, was described to be calm, slightly disengaged and somewhat unaffected. The CCTV at the hospital showed him scrolling through his mobile phone while A&E doctors, which is ER doctors, were fighting to save Carrie's life. Which again goes to show what assholes those people really were. So. Literally, Kyril is fighting for his life and the, the doctors are trying to save his life and yet Kemar at this point thinks that it's okay, you know, to just scroll on his phone. Oh, let me check another Facebook post. Oh, let me see on Instagram if I have another like or whatever he was doing. Come on, guys. Seriously? Yeah, I mean, I get that he's not the biological father of Kyril, but still, he's a baby we are talking about here. Even a stranger would be more stressed out whilst awaiting for doctors to save a boy's life. Even a stranger would do that and they would be acting differently. After a post-mortem examination was conducted on Wednesday 23rd of October, the horrific scale of Kyril's injuries were discovered. Kyril has died as a result of trauma to his abdomen that had torn his liver probably as a result of squeezing, crushing or blows and he also had five broken ribs. He was found to have 41 rib fractures by the time he died on October the 20th, 2019, as well as internal bleeding and a 4 cm cut to his liver. A 4 cm cut to his liver. The fractures were caused by a twisting motion and the fatal liver injury was from a kick, punch or blow to the stomach. The non-fatal injuries were inflicted in at least 
five separate attacks over 28 days, indicating a significant period of abuse. Can you just think about this? 28 days, 28 days, a month, 28 days of torture and pain that Kyrie, only two years old, went through. 28 days. Whilst five of the broken ribs were attributed to resuscitation efforts, it was determined that his injuries would have been sustained on at least five occasions in the four weeks leading up to his death. This was a pattern of repeated and significant assaults on a completely defenseless and young baby. The effect of these injuries would have been real pain not only on their infliction but also pain and discomfort after and following each violent episode and he was only two years old on october the 20th his ribs were crushed once more and this killed him as a result of the post-mortem findings a homicide investigation was launched by officers from the med specialist crime command on Thursday, 31st of October 2019, Kemar and Felicia were arrested and charged with Kyril's murder. Both denied any responsibility for Kyril's injuries, but of course, what do you expect? All of them say the same, but they are all innocent. Kemar Brown said that he had gone to the shops that morning and returned to find Kyril unconscious. Both also said they left the flat at separate times briefly on the day that Kyril died, although only Felicia's account could be corroborated by CCTV footage. From my point of view, since Kemar's account couldn't be verified by anything, and we know, especially in London, I used to live in London for a long time, we know that in London you have CCTV cameras just about everywhere, covering every inch of every corner of everywhere. So. For Kemar not to have been spotted on CCTV, that makes me believe that he never went to the shops, that he was left alone with Kyril whilst Felicia went to the shops, which would make a lot of sense. And it's uh, honestly, it's a bit unclear at this stage because the police is not re uh, releasing so much information out there. When interviewed by police, Felicia claimed to have frantically made Google searches to find out what might be wrong with Kyril on the day that he died. But really, phone evidence showed that one of the last searches she had made on her phone was for the Central London Steakhouse, SDK. So, so she made a call to the, so she made a Google search on her phone for London Steakhouse after Kyril died or when Kyril was unconscious. So for her, it was more important to look up a London Steakhouse on Google <laughs> rather than at least looking up the emergency number. You know what I'm saying? Not to call the non-emergency number. So she didn't know the emergency number to make the call. So she called the non-emergency number, but she knew how to search for London Steakhouse. It just blows my mind. Oh my God, seriously. What's wrong with these people? The breakthrough in the following police investigation came when officers went through Felicia's phone and the 50,000 pictures on it and came across harrowing recordings. Detective Chief Inspector Kate Kieran said the case had a massive impact on her team. Some of the staff needed special support because of the unusual nature of the case. The recordings captured the sound of Kyril being beaten and abused. It, they captured the sound, the sound of a two-year-old boy being beaten and abused. In most of the beatings, Kemar Brown can be heard, but Felicia Shirley is also heard striking Kyril. The harrowing audio footage, which has not been released, was played to jurors who could hear Kemar repeatedly telling the toddler to shut up, followed by slapping and hitting noises. In a recording taken from July 2019, Kemar can be heard telling Kyril, no more crying, stop, stop crying, and what are you crying for? After this, a slapping noise can be heard above Kyril's distressed wailing, followed by Kemar mocking the child's crying. In one audio recording, it's believed that Kyril was hit around 
seven or eight times in the space of 10 seconds. Seven, eight times in 10 seconds. His mom can also be heard in the background of a few recordings as she, as she too tells Kyril to shut up when he is in distress. In one recording, slapping sounds and hitting noises were present as Kyril could be heard getting into an, into an increasing state of upset. Felicia could then be heard asking, what did he do? To which Kemal responded, he got up. That's what he did. He got up. It's not exactly known who gave Tyrell the final blow that ended his life. Only Kemar and Felicia know that. Jurors heard evidence that the pair's relationship continued even after the toddler's death. The jury never got to hear from either of them in the witness box because they decided not to give evidence in their defense. Felicia surely blamed... <laughs> Oh my God, Felicia Shirley blamed the NHS 111 service for the death of her son, claiming she was given bad advice when trying to revive him, being told not to be afraid to push too hard. Defending Felicia Shirley and Kemar Brown, Mark McDonald, Queen's Counsel, told jurors at the trial to keep an open mind when examining the facts of this case. Jurors at the Old Bailey had seen evidence from forensic pathologist Dr. Evan Mattis who said that Felicia should not have been told by NHS 111 staff to administer two-handed CPR to her son and that he could not rule out that those actions had caused the broken ribs. So, so they were really trying to go for this defense. Are you joking? Seriously? Saying that Kyril died because of the wrong advice given by the NHS staff on the phone and not because of the prolonged abuse that he suffered. No, no, no. Well, of course, they... These people, this kind of people, animals, not even animals, whatever you want to call them, they will find all these kind of ex excuses and always pointing the fingers at others because they don't want to obviously say that they did it themselves. Of course not. Why should they? Experts for the prosecution told jurors there was no recorded cases of a child having a macerated liver from being given CPR. During the prosecution's closing speech, some of the recordings of Kyril's being beaten again and again were played to the court once more. Unable to carry on listening, Felicia, Kyril's mom, left the dock. She didn't even give a bit of respect to her own two-year-old son to just sit there on the dock and listen. She didn't do that. On Friday, the 4th of March, 2022, at the Old Bailey, the boyfriend of Kyril's mother, Kemar Brown, 28 years old, born on 2nd of June, 1993, of Bansham Manor Road, Thornton Heath, was found guilty of Kyril's murder. He was also found guilty of causing, allowing serious physical harm to a child. Kyril's mother, Felicia Shirley, 24 years old, born on 24th of October 1997, of Bansham Manor Road, Thornton Heath, was found guilty of manslaughter. She had previously pleaded guilty on the first day of her trial, on Monday 17th of January 2022, to allowing the death of a child and allowing serious physical harm to a child. On the confirmation of the guilty verdict, his honor judge, Lucraft, told Kemar and Felicia that they must feel utterly ashamed of what they had done. They will both be sentenced at the same court on Friday, 25th of March, 2022. Kyril of Thornton Heath, South London, died in October 2019. He was only two years old. The brutality and cruelty were not only horrifying, but captured on the suspect's mobile phones. The court was able to hear harrowing evidence of the abuse and Kyril's terrified screams. The abusive adults are not only sadistic, but also pathetically immature and self-absorbed. And, self and just like in the case of Arthur Labinio Hughes and Star Hobson, a lot more could have been done to save Kyril's life. After the court reached its verdict, the Croydon Safeguarding Children Partnership published its review of the case, setting out in detail the last few months of the little boy's short life. 
On several occasions, police and social workers and other agencies missed chances to intervene. And we hear this times and times again, and we keep on hearing and we never learn a lesson, do we? A major opportunity was missed in May 2019 when Kyril, then 20 months old, was taken to hospital with a serious head injury. His mother said it was caused when her son jumped from a sofa. In, a, in different accounts, like I mentioned previously in, uh, in the video, um, it's mentioned that uh, she said he hit his head on a high chair. So honestly, I'm not sure which one is the right one. Clinicians assess this as accidental, although they had their doubts. Croydon Social Services agreed to make a home visit to check up on Kyril after his discharge. So the hospital have they had their doubts. And that's how social services paid a visit to Kyril and his mother. Once Kyril was back at home, however, social services so they didn't even pay that visit. Social services cancelled this visit because it was not a priority. As the review notes, the threshold for a referral had not been met. So we are thinking here about thresholds for referrals. <sighs> Social workers dismissed the hospital safeguarding team's concerns as professional anxiety. This was a mistake, the review said, but it was made in a bigger system context. But of course it was a mistake. So it was dismissed as professional anxiety, seriously? You say it's professional anxiety, but you don't even go to check and make sure that it's not professional anxiety? Either way, your job is supposed to go and check and see, especially since the hospital raised the concerns. I don't know guys, what's happening here? I, I don't know. What this phase describes is essentially a crisis unfolding in, but not unique to Croydon. A children's services department overwhelmed by the weight of referrals with no clear and consistent thresholds for intervening to protect a child. Social work, the review found, was crisis-led and focusing on only the highest priority referrals <laughs> oh my god so then it means that only the highest priority are priorities are referred and all the other children who might be in danger but is not sure they are just ignored how does that work and at times if you have priority referrals being made it doesn't mean that they are followed i don't get that Croydon's Children's Services has been labelled inadequate in a, de in a devastating inspection by Ofsted two years previously. There had been some signs of progress by the time of Kyrie's death, but it was still affected by high staff turnover, lack of clarity over safeguarding thresholds and the legacy of drift. Croydon Council will, would declare itself bankrupt a little over a year later. It was not that Felicia received no help from the authorities. Family support services were lined up for this vulnerable single mother with a history of trauma and depression. She would agree to professional help and then ignore it. Her parenting was chaotic and inconsistent. She regularly missed GP appointments for Kyril and went for months without seeing a health visitor. So clearly she wasn't such a fit mother right so even more so she should have been on the radar of social services in in my honest opinion i know that a history of depression doesn't make you less of a parent and i'm not saying that it does obviously i'm not saying that all i'm saying is that there were signs there there were signs there of her neglecting her own son's needs which those signs should have been taken more seriously and they haven't because if they would Kyrie would still be alive and he's not. In July, in July, the police were called to a domestic dispute at Felicia's home after a passerby heard her shouting, stop hitting my face. No action was taken after, after she denied she had been assaulted. The police also failed to notify children's services. Had they done so, police records would have revealed that her new partner was Kemar Brown, a man with convictions for assault possession of weapons and domestic abuse. The police visit, the review found, was a missed opportunity as well as the last time Kyril was seen by a professional. 
Three months later, he was killed. As the senior Crown Prosecutor Samantha Yeland said, the two people who were supposed to look after him the most were those that caused injury and in the end his death. And honestly guys, this is not something new. In the UK or in the US, as I'm sure in so many, in so many other parts of the world, social services and authorities fail children and fail to save their lives. Yet, on the other hand, they take children from families that have done absolutely nothing wrong, yet they allow abused children to suffer and die at the hands of their abusers. What kind of justice this is? I have no idea. It's clear that the system is failing every single day. How many children have to die before we learn our lesson? How many children have to die before we make changes to make sure that we save those children's lives? Cheese. Cheese. Is that the only thing you have to say? Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. I will be following this case and I'll keep you posted. Again, thanks so much for watching. Take care and stay safe guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.